to uh, unfortunately have to say something that's probably not very popular in this crowd. So keep throwing things at me before I say it. I salute you and citizen involvement is very important and play within the rules and use the same rules the other side uses. And I really am on this side. I'm one of the largest donors to Trump in the state of Georgia. Not anymore. But one of the worst things you can do in this stuff is start repeating and promoting stuff that absolutely just didn't happen. And Georgia election was pretty damn clean. Uh, I'll defend a lot of it if you want to on the sidebar, but Dominion voting machines connecting to the internet, oh, Chavez, beyond insane, didn't happen. Uh, we printed hard copy ballots, and you got a hard copy of what you electronically voted. You looked at it, and when you turned it in, they printed it and said, now, you see, this is your ballot that you, you've marked, and it's printed and it's counted, and it's locked. That was going to Everything, especially that Mr. Trump promoted, that I heard was roundly and convincingly debunked. The big eruption of the, the water pipes, or, no, it didn't happen. The rollerboard suitcases under the, under the tables, and here we have a video of them pulling out, didn't happen. Those were official block boxes. I've seen high definition, high resolution videos where you zoom in and that was what it was supposed to be. It goes on and on and on. And you probably recognize the name Bob Cheeley mm -hmm. and John Gordon. Uh, Bob Cheeley's a highly respected and very talented attorney. And I joined with them very reluctantly, but my wife was such a, a believer in all of the stuff. Like ballots getting mailed out didn't happen in Georgia. They don't mail out ballots. They mail out applications for ballots. So everything that I could, everything I could hear that I could look at, and I could talk to different people, not all were Democrats. It was just a moment, and so. They had a, a legal group get together, solicited people, and I said, I'm not going to give you any money unless Trump, Trump's got plenty of damn money. He needs to put up some. So he put up some. Uh, Bernie Marcus in Atlanta, this is on the record, so you can look it up. Bernie Marcus put up some. I was one of the big donors. Reluctantly, but I wanted to, I wanted something, and she gave me this. And I said, well, everything else has been bumped. But absentee ballots is where it could happen. And they had a highly respected material science engineer from engineering university in Georgia. I don't say which one. And that person said, absolutely, I can tell you if the ballots ever been folded or not. I don't even have to touch it. I just have to have high resolution photographs. And I can tell you if it was ever folded. The theory was absentee ballots had been printed up, signed, or printed up, voted, and turned in, but never turned. The absentee is an That's what we call the Christine balance. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Guys, I'm doing this for my wife, and I hope you prove me wrong, but you have not shown me one damn thing that causes me to be suspicious in the Georgia election, except the absentee balance. I'm really, really concerned. But I'm not going to give you $250,000 for your lawsuit with no, nothing to back it up. So you start your audit, and you bring me the results, and I'll give you $125,000, which, by the way, I don't know how in the world it happened, but just like those people, and just like the one you mentioned, too, that some of your stuff can be tax deductible. That's what a foundation is, it's tax deductible. So there's nothing odd about a foundation, except I don't know how to do it. But I didn't mind through a foundation. Through this group. And I said, I'll give you 125, so I'll give you half my pledge. And you better show me some non folded pristine ballots before I'm going to give you another penny. They never showed me anything. 
Mm -hmm. Well, sir, if I could just interrupt you just for a second, because I know all about all of this. And I'll start with this. I We didn't challenge Dominion in our lawsuit. But what we did was we relied on government records. And Brad Raffensperger violated Georgia law by sending out applications to everybody on the active voter list, which is not permissible under Georgia law. But he did it anyway. And the problems, I mean, I can go through all the different allegations. That situation at State Farm Arena with the video, the supposed investigation, here's the part that is an absolute truth. I've watched that video. I'm the one who got the video. And what they did was they made the people leave, the observers and the media leave about 10 p.m. on election night saying we are through for the day. We'll start again tomorrow. After everyone was gone, they did take the ballots out from under the table. Now, you know what the investigation was about? Were those suitcases or were those bins? That was the FBI investigation. I've read their report. I don't give a rat's ass, pardon me, if they're garbage cans. <laughs> they violated the law, which they didn't, that neither the FBI nor the Georgia Bureau of Investigation bothered to know that the statute says you cannot process ballots outside the viewing of the public and the media. And they did it from 10, about 10.25 p.m. on election night till about 12.15 a.m. the next morning. And with regard to the Chile lawsuit, there's a reason they didn't bring you any results because the judge ruled after discovery had started, they ruled, the judge ruled they didn't have standing, so just dismiss the case. A subsequent decision by the Supreme Court in another case, that case could be reinstated. And I've seen the results, the preliminary results of what they found in Fulton County and what they found are serious problems where you had duplicate batches and duplicate ballots where you had, uh, and this was just a part of what they already begun to discover, but that litigation went away because the judge decided they didn't have standing, applied the wrong standard, the wrong legal standard. But let me tell you what, there are problems in Fulton County. There are still problems in Fulton County. There are problems in DeKalb County, and we know what they are now. I just want to prepare for those before 2024 because we don't have, I agree with something you said, and it's one of the things I say to people about the voting machines. When somebody brings me the proof, you know, I gotta see it. I'm the doubting Thomas on the voting machines. I know what people say or is possible, I've never seen the proof. I watched the Mike Lindell Cyber Symposium and the big reveal, and I never could figure out what the big reveal was. So we have made it our, I make it my, rule. We're going to do what we can do that's real work, that has real results, that gets people that really can help us protect the integrity of the system. I'm not going to be, we're not going down the rabbit trails of decertifying the 2020 election. You know, I mean, I just kept saying, I hope people are not giving money to that because there's no legal possibility of that. But believe me, to say that the, the Georgia election of 2020 was clean, we had 31 categories of illegal votes. The, bat, the margin between Trump, President Trump and Joe Biden was 11,779 votes in just one category. And all of our, everything we put in our uh, lawsuit was verifiable from government records, from public records. According to the postal records, 18,325 votes were cast and counted by people whose registration address was at what the post office labeled as vacant, either vacant lot, vacant. There were almost a thousand ballots cast by people whose registration address was a PO box. Now, that's not right. And we should have had our day in court, but we didn't get it because we never got a judge appointed. But I don't say it was stolen. I never say that. If they were stolen, it was stolen in plain sight by the Zuckerberg money that pumped a bunch of money on a bunch of people into Democratic counties to gin up the Democratic vote using 501c3 dollars that was sufficient to turn the state to uh, be a Biden state. And that's what we have to fight against in 2024, among other things. Okay, I've got this. I'm coming back at you really kind of misinterpreted what I said. Okay, what I said about those bands was correct. 
what I said about the plumbing was correct. Yeah, we never talked about the plumbing. I don't give a, I don't care about the plumbing. Well, I, I care. I was just trying to tell the audience to know what they were talking about because I had so many of my close friends. I'm one of the reddest state, the reddest voters in the reddest county in the reddest state. I mean, the reddest county in that state. And and I own the team, but I don't like to say something unless I absolutely know. The way I was raised up in North Georgia is you don't ever call somebody a thief or a liar unless by God you've got the proof or there's going to be a fist fight right then. <laughs> So and I agree all I'm saying is all of those things that were running around all over North Georgia, close friends and my wife, had been debunked. The one I wanted to see was the Christine Ballas. And, and we never got, they never got a chance to get that expert to be able to have access to those ballots. Brad Raffensperger, who wasn't even a party to the litigation, came in and argued against giving access from Fulton County. It wasn't a Secretary of State's office, it was the Fulton County to get access to those to the original ballots. And that never was resolved because the judge dismissed the case. One last question. Yes. Um.